So now we're back to the topic of vibe coding. And I wanted to share a little bit of information about Rick Rubin because he has somehow become this sort of perfect poster boy for vibe coding and, and what that really means. So in case you don't know about Rick Rubin, he's an American record producer and co-founder of Def Jam Recordings. Huge names, he's been a part of developing things for LL Cool J, Beastie Boys, Run DMC, Public Enemy, Ghetto Boys, even heavy metal bands, also groups like Red Hot Chili Peppers, Ed Sheeran, Lady Gaga, all sorts of major, major names, ACDC, Aerosmith, the list goes on and on. There's actually a great uh, 60 Minutes interview where they, they talk to him about what he does and it's very much where he is just sort of this person that gets it, that understands, and he does everything by feeling. He doesn't have any actual music talent or understanding of mixing boards or, or any of that. He just purely goes by, by feeling and what he thinks. And the thing is that he's been extremely successful by helping them understand, oh yeah, this is really good, this is bad, change this, don't do this, that type of thing. And he has also started to get into aspects of AI and vibe coding specifically, because once again, he's doing everything by feel, and that's what kind of vibe coding is in, in essence, on some level, is looking at it and just sort of talking to the AI, right? Just going by your feeling, oh, I'd like it to this, and it would be great if this was here, without having any technical aspects. Now, in a previous video, we kind of talked about how, hey, there's some good and bad to that, because we still need to ensure that the code that is being generated is properly done so that it can be modified and enhanced in the future. Things like proper commenting, proper structure. If you don't know the technical aspects, then the code might not be great in the long run. But besides that, let's just focus right now on, on, on Rick Rubin and some of these aspects of vibe coding because he's actually come out with something really interesting here where he's come out with a a living book, if you will, that's, a, that's available now on the internet. This book is called The Way of Code, The Timeless Art of Vibe Coding. So this is powerful because this is actually based on Lao Tzu, which if you don't know, that is the author and the main person behind the teachings of Taoism. Now, Taoism is both a philosophy and also a religion, but we're going to focus primarily on the aspect of it being a philosophy. So this is a philosophy dealing with balance, with understanding, with really taking a step back and viewing the whole picture type of thing. And it's really powerful what he's done here in that he's, make it, he's made this to be a focus on sort of the philosophical aspects of looking at code and the vibe coding aspects and the AI aspects of this. And he's focused all that within the philosophy of Taoism. So you can see here this first, uh, first stanza here where he says, the code that can be named is not the eternal code. The function that can be defined is not the limitless function. That's very interesting because you compare that to the actual Taoism text, this uh, ancient text, and it says, the Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. Yes, this is referred to as a living book because thanks to the power of AI, you can actually go through and do vibe coding within the book. It allows you to type in something and through that modify what the book itself is displaying. This is really interesting, really cool and powerful because now you feel like you're actually part of the process, part of the book, part of this philosophy of vibe coding. Really interesting and really connecting through this interactive capability. So the whole book goes through where he's taken the, the text and he's converted it basically to be aspects of, of AI, aspects of coding, but looked at on a more philosophical basis, comparing it to, to Taoism which is really interesting. And it really made me think about different things that will be occurring because of AI, meaning that there's gonna be lots of challenges to different philosophies because we have this new entity. Uh, it, it, it borderline religion aspects uh, that will be touched upon, but I don't, wanna, I don't wanna view this video or go into that as far as religious aspects, but I definitely wanna think about it on a philosophical level. Um, because this really makes us think as far as 
well, where do we get answers from? Well, we've gotten answers from ancient texts and ancient philosophies, ways of thinking about this, but more and more people will be turning to the AI for their answers. They'll be going to the AI. In a previous video that I just made, it talked about how Sam Altman is saying that more and more people are starting to use AI whenever they're making life decisions. They're turning to the AI and asking the AI for, for help, for guidance, for helping them to make certain decisions or choosing certain paths in life. This is really powerful and something for us to think about because I realized that I've done that multiple times as well, where I've turned to the AI and asked it for its perspective on things. Now, I am very cognizant of things like over-reliance on AI and critical thinking and all these different aspects of AI literacy that I go over many, many times, right? These are all super important. So I have that training, but so many people don't have that training. So that's why it's that much more important for us to ensure that we are using critical thinking, critical analysis. We're helping our students realize this. And now we need to have this mindset also of, hey, more and more people are going to be turning to the AI for help and guidance. So it's going to be more of a philosophical aspect of how do I move forward? How do I make decisions in life? Well, more of them are going to use this resource of AI. Whereas in the past, they might have looked to these types of books or these types of ancient wisdom or even going to elders or partners or friends or uh, mentors. More and more people are going for the quick option of, well, I'll just ask the AI. Now, that is a, a good source on some level, but that shouldn't be your only source because the AI isn't perfect. The AI will have a perspective. There's many different perspectives out there, and this is based off of its training. So the way that you ask the question, the information that you provide to the AI, all affect the answers. So we need to make sure that we are understanding this and we're helping students and friends and colleagues to understand this as well, because we face sort of this new philosophical realization as far as how we're getting information and how we're making choices in life. So this is really important. I'm really interested in your thoughts on this. Do you use AI now more to help you with philosophical aspects of making decisions and understanding life itself? This is a powerful thing. Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? What are your thoughts? What are your perspectives? What do you think the future is going to hold now that we have AI that is very helpful in giving us responses and helping us to make decisions? So please put in the comments and let me know your, your perspectives on this, because this is powerful things that is just going to escalate and get more and more involved with everyone's life. So I look forward to reading what you have to say as we, as always, learn from one another and make this channel that much more informative and developmental for everyone. Please like and share. And remember, learning is for life.